Welcome back friends. Let's continue learning the ST Narrative Controller Programming. In this video, we will see problems with a UART polling program and then we will see how to solve those problems using the interrupt feature of the ST Narrative Controller. We are going to see this using a simple example project. I know it has been a long time since we met. Due to a lot of live adults, I am not able to record, edit and post videos on time. I really apologize for that. So without wasting much time, let's dive. First, I am creating a new STM32 project. As usual, I am using Nucleo G474 board. So we can click on the board selector. I am typing G474. I am selecting my board here. Now click next. I am giving a project name UART interrupt. Actually 12 is the episode number. Now we can click finish. Click yes here. Now we got STM Cube MX window. Essentially for our project, we need a UART port. So go to connectivity menu. I am going to use UART1. Select asynchronous mode here. In the bottom panel, we can verify the board rate values. Nothing to change here as we are going to use uh, W1 to W0 board rate. Since we are going to use interrupt in our project, we have to enable global interrupt for UART. For that, at NVIC settings, check this option. Also, make sure that we have LED port is selected as output. Generally, by default, this will be enabled. Next, go to clock configuration, select maximum clock available. So, in my case, it is 170 MHz. So, that's all about the configuration. Next, we can generate the code by clicking on the save button here. Click yes. So, CubeID has successfully generated the code for our project configuration. Next, we can start coding our application. But before that, let's add these files to Git. For that, I am opening source tree. You will see our last commit here, it was the UART polling project version. In this section of unstaged files, we can see several files with this question mark icon. These are not being added to our project for tracking. Tracking is a process of monitoring the state of files by Git version control system. To enable tracking of the files, we should add those files at least once into one commit. In source tree, you can see several file status. In untracked files option, you can see the same files. So, let's add those files for commit by clicking on the stage all button. Files go disappear. To see them again, select modified option in this menu. So, as you see here, all files are staged and ready for commit. Now, click on the commit button on top. We can write some commit message on what we have done with these files. Uh, this will be useful to understand when you or somebody else will be revisiting the code at a later stage. Now we can push the code into cloud so that it will be accessible to you people. Click on the push button on the title ribbon. Now click push. A new window has appeared asking the repo credentials. As I have set up a personal access token for my machine to access the remote repo, I am going with the token option here and I am pasting the token in this field. Click on sign in. That's all. Now it will start to push the content. It's over. Fine. Now let's start coding. Before we start to code the interrupt program, I want to show you its purpose. For that, let's write a LED blinking program. We have already went through this program, so I am not going in detail. So here, the LED at PF5 will blink every 250 millisecond. Let's execute and see it. Click OK for the debug configuration. Now we can start the execution. So as expected, LED is blinking every 250 millisecond. We can add this milestone to Git. I am switching into source tree. Just wait until we see uncommitted changes. So these are the changes we have made. First, we can stage this file then click on the commit button i am pushing this message as commit text click on commit so we have created an led blinking version of our project we can go back to cube ide now we are stepping to see the problem i want to transmit and receive some characters over the serial port i am writing some lines for that we have already familiar with this line in our last project first argument is a uart handle second one is the address of the data to be sent in our case, I have to send 4 bytes and uh, these bytes I am storing in an array. I am writing the array name here. We will declare this array later. Next argument is number of bytes. So it is 4 obviously. Last one is a timeout value. It is a time for which my controller will wait until it transmits all the 4 bytes. 
In next line, we can write instruction to receive the bytes over serial port. Similar to transmit function, HL provides a receive function like this. Arguments are also similar to transmit function. First is the UART handle. Next one is the address of data. Third one is the size of data. And finally, we have the timeout. For transmit function, I have put a large value. 300 would be enough. It actually depends upon the board rate. So, as you can see here, when we input some characters over serial port, the receive function will capture that and store into this Rx buffer array. Then the transmit function will send whatever contained in this array over the serial port. This repeats continuously as it is enclosed in a while loop. Next, we can define the data array Rx buffer. It should be an unsigned 8-bit array because uh, that is the argument data type. Now, just check our test setup. This is the connection diagram you have to follow. USB cable from the nuclear board is connected to the PC. Now, let's build and run this program. To see the result, I am opening the Terra term. You can use any of the serial terminal applications. Select uh, serial and select the COM port. In my case, it is COM5. To change the board rate, uh, go under uh, setup menu, go to serial port, select our board rate. Now click on new setting. As we have to send characters, we have to enable local echo feature. For that, go to setup menu again and click on terminal and check this local echo option. We got a blank screen. Now we can type four characters, uh, one, two, three, four. Now step back. So it continuously prints one, two, three, four because now Rx buffer has one, two, three, four. Next I'm typing some other characters. Now RS buffer got modified and printing accordingly. But have you forgotten our LED? What is it doing? Oh, LED is blinking so slowly. We have put only 50 millisecond delay. Then why is this happening like this? The time of delay in UART receive and transmit function increased the total duration between each toggling of LED. So it altered the requirement of our project. Thus this method of UART pooling is not a solution for this kind of requirement. For that, we have to adopt interrupt method. Okay, before trying that out, let's commit this version. Switching to source tray, these are the code changes we did. Now commit them. To implement interrupt, we have to write this function. Please make sure that it is above the while loop. And also there is it at the end of this function, which is different from our normal UART receive function. As usual, First argument is UART handle. Second one is the data to be sent. So we can put the array name here. Third is the number of bytes to receive. That's all. There is no timeout value here. The interrupt handling is achieved using callback handlers. We can explain about that in the next video. Just type this function over here. This is a UART receive callback handler provided by a chair library. Upon reception of 4 bytes into UART port, this function will be executed. Next, I am shifting these lines from here to here. I will explain about this. In the receive function, I am adding an IT. I am removing the timeout value from here. That's all. As per our requirement, we have to print the content we have received on the Rx buffer. On this function execution, transmit function will transmit the characters in the Rx buffer. And then you want to receive IT function will start to receive next set of packets in the interrupt mode. So now we can build and execute this program. Let's clear this window. We can type something. It is printing back what I have written. So it is working as we record, right? Now let's observe the LED blinking pattern. Great, now it is blinking at 50 millisecond interval. So we will explain more about this in an upcoming explanation video. Please wait for that. And all the projects which we have done so far is available in GitHub. Link is there on the description. Until we meet again, bye.